What is up, my brothers and sisters? As we praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know who I I want you guys to know that you will go through suffering on this earth. You will go through persecution. You will go through heartbreak. But because of suffering, because of the suffering on the cross, we are sanctified. And I would ask you today, do not put your faith in man. Do not put your faith in your friends. Do not put your faith in your family. Because when stuff hits the fan, they will not have your back. There is only one that will truly have your back through thick and thin. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People will not stand up for what is right for you. Though you may stand up for it, and though there's no telling what's going to happen to you, you have to stand up for what's right. And you got to know that our Lord and Savior has your back. Because He suffered on that cross to sanctify us. So whatever valley we're going to go through, or whatever mountain we're on top of, our Lord and Savior will have our back through thick and through thin. People that you think are your friends will turn on you. You will be hated. You will be persecuted. And you will suffer. But I am here to tell you today, no matter what people try, I will not stop spreading the gospel until I am dead in my grave and I am in glory with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to His holy name. Praise Jesus. And hallelujah. They've done everything they can to stop me from preaching the gospel. And the people that I respect, the people that I thought had my back, don't have my back. But there is one. There is one that has my back. There is one, and He is the one true living God. I don't care what any mortal on this earth thinks. And I don't care what I go through for doing this. I will stand up for what is right until my last breath. I will stand up for the oppressed. I will stand up for the depressed. I will stand up for the homeless. I will give a voice to those who have no voice. Because that is what my Lord and Savior has called me to do. And nobody is going to stop me no matter what happens. Praise His name. Praise His name. Amen. Amen. What is up, my brothers and sisters? And welcome to a message that God put on my heart today. And I want you to know that in Christianity, the whole circle of Christianity is around suffering. But that suffering equals sanctification. We are sanctified through suffering. For what Christ did on the cross for you and me, we are sanctified. There was one point in the Old Testament where Israel had turned godless. They were full of sin and they were filthy. And God put out a great famine across the land of Israel. And there was a lady named Naomi who had a husband and seven sons. And this famine affected them because they lived in Bethlehem. So eventually, after starving long enough, they packed their stuff up and they moved to try to find food. And they ended up in Moab. Now, if you know the story of the Moabites, they were not too friendly with the Jewish people. But they made themselves at home in Moab. And one of Naomi's son meets a lady named Ruth. And they get married. And a Moab marries a Jew. 
And this is when I tell people that say the Bible is racist that it is not. Interracial marriage is not wrong. Naomi's son was a Jew. Ruth was a Gentile Moabite. They got married. So she became Naomi's daughter-in-law. But eventually the famine struck down Naomi's entire family. Took out her husband and all seven of her sons. And there stood her and Ruth. And Naomi was getting ready to head back home to Bethlehem. She told Ruth to stay here and make a good life for yourself. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. This is Ruth responding to Naomi when Naomi told her to stay here in Moab. She said, don't urge me to leave or to turn my back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Ruth, a Gentile, a Moab, said she would never leave the widow's side. It was actually two widows. Ruth was a widow. Naomi was a widow. And they became best friends. They became inseparable. They head back to Bethlehem. And this is all part of God's plan. I'm just wanting you to know that ahead of time. They head back to Bethlehem where Ruth meets Boaz. Ruth meets Boaz. Now Naomi has already changed her name. She is in a very depressed state. She is suffering. She is suffering and she does not feel sanctified. But as God has shown us in the past, suffering will always equal sanctification. Ruth ends up marrying Boaz. And they have a child. And for the first time in years, Naomi felt a little happiness. And if you've got your Bibles handy, turn to Ruth chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Ruth chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. This is going to tell you how God works. Naomi was righteous, and Ruth was a righteous Gentile. They worked together, they were two peas in a pot. And Ruth, who was a Gentile and a Moabite, worshipped the one true living God. Starting at verse 13, So Boaz took Ruth into his home and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. Then the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth, care for you in your old age, for he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast, and she cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor woman said, Now at last Naomi has a son again, and they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, and the grandfather of King David. Now just imagine this for just a second. Probably the worst thing that could possibly happen to Naomi happened. She was suffering beyond anyone's recognition. Just like Job suffered, Naomi was suffering. She lost her whole family. And she only had one person to count on. Maybe you feel that way today. Maybe you've lost people in your life. Maybe your wife walked out on you. Maybe you lost custody of your kids. Maybe people turn their back on you for your drug addiction or your alcoholism. But there was one person 
that stuck beside Naomi through thick and through thin. Now you understand that Obed was the grandfather of the great King David. Now you're seeing, as I'm seeing, how the suffering of Naomi started turning in to sanctification. It started a lineage. David's lineage. King David's lineage. Who came from King David's lineage? Our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You see how God had everything planned perfect for Naomi, for Ruth, for Boaz, for Obed. He had it planned. He knew what line he wanted to send his son down here in. And it was in the Naomi line. It was in the Ruth line. It was in the King David line that we got our Redeemer. All the suffering that Naomi went through, all the suffering that Ruth went through, all the suffering led to our Redeemer who went through His own suffering to sanctify the entire world. God is amazing and He's doing the same things in your life right now. Whatever bad situation you're in, it doesn't matter. God has a great plan and a great purpose and you are walking in God's favor. Your life may seem like it is at the end of its rope. Your addiction may be so bad that you feel like you'll never stop. Your depression is so bad that you're thinking about taking your own life. God sees each and every one of you and what each and every one of you is going through, but He has a greater plan and a greater purpose just like He did for Naomi, just like He did for Ruth, just like He did for David because if it wasn't for them, no one would have bore our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But God knew. God knew what He wanted. And He knew the lineage that he wanted to send his only son into. And that was the lineage of King David who was in the lineage of Naomi. Suffering led to sanctification. And then Christ came to save the world of their sins. And his suffering led to our sanctification. It is amazing how God works everything, whether it's evil or whether it's good, He will make it turn into the purpose that He wanted it to serve. And that's exactly what He did with Naomi and Ruth and Obed and David and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was God in the flesh. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're suffering through on this very day, that suffering that you're going through today, that suffering that you're going through down the line will lead to your sanctification. But when it comes down to it, we are all sanctified by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to His holy name. And as I said at the beginning of the message, as they're trying to stop me from preaching the gospel, I will never stop until I am dead in the ground. No matter what they threaten me with, no matter what they tell, no matter how hard they push me, my Lord, my Redeemer, my Savior that came from Naomi's lineage, Ruth, King David, he will come first before any mortal on the face of this earth. All glory to His holy name. Praise Jesus. God always has a greater plan. His plan is greater than you can conceive in your mind. 
Naomi's suffering led to yours and mine sanctification today. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's suffering led to our sanctification. So just remember whatever you're suffering through, it is leading to sanctification. <laughs>